Hello, everyone. My name is Aidan Murphy, um, and I'll be presenting our paper on behalf of myself, my co-authors, Tama and Anthony, on the case for grammatical evolution in test generation. So software needs to be tested before it can be put out. So you need to make sure it's working correctly like you want and that it's a safe piece of software that you can put out into the world. So to test this, you need to generate tests. So this generating these tests is a very, very important task, but very time consuming and you need an awful lot of expertise. So a lot of the time you'll need expertise on the software you want to test and on generating tests as well. So this is very time consuming and requires, um, you know, lots of expertise to get this right. So because of this, many techniques have been um, created to try, maybe not necessarily completely take away from human testers, but to, to reduce the amount of maybe stress or work they need to do. And one of the um, most successful of these are search-based techniques. So kind of maybe most widely utilized in, in, in academia and industry with the goal of trying to reduce the amount of time, reduce the amount of um, maybe the mistakes that the human expert would, would make. So these have been widely adapted in lots of domains and there's lots of um, open source exam, you know, kind of powerful test generation tools available. You know, Eva Sweet and Randu probably being the most maybe too well known, which generates um, either whole test suites or just individual unit tests for Java. However, there are limitations to this um, search-based test generation approach. So the first is that it's difficult to incorporate human expertise into the search. So if, you know, say a human tester knows something about the problem or there's a particular area of the search space they want to explore, it's very difficult for them to maybe code that into the, the search or the, the test generation process. The second is, I guess, as with most uh, evolutionary type things, the more complicated an object is, the more difficult it is for the search to try find it. So creating complex objects is a, a struggle. And then finally, just domain flexibility. So again, a lot of times these um, software, these tests are coded to set up or to generate certain kind of types of tests. So if you want to move away from that domain or change the, the style of these tests, it can be quite difficult and lots of effort would need to go in. You kind of need to get into the weeds of the code to, to generate those types of tests. So a solution we suggest is grammatical evolution. So GE is a evolutionary computation technique and it uses a grammar to create any kind of object or structure in any language you want in the structure you want. So you define a grammar, so you create a grammar, and that defines the structure of the objects you're going to create, the tests you're going to create. So another kind of maybe way of thinking of this is that the grammar defines the search space. So you're only going to create objects that are legally allowed by the grammar. So your search is only going to look in parts of the space um, that the grammar defines. And we propose that GE actually offers maybe a solution to some of those limitations we just mentioned previously. So the first is incorporating human expertise. So if we have just a very simple test here, so we want to create two variables. So at the minute, we just have this kind of var one, which is just being created, just a random number. And then var two is just another random number. However, just by a very simple tweak to the grammar, we can incorporate any maybe human expertise or human bias that they want to introduce here. So simply by changing var2 to a dependent variable. So instead of it just being a complete random number, it now depends on your what, what, whatever random value you have for var1. So this means that you will be restricting your search in var2 to numbers that are only greater than var1. And of course, you can change this to maybe 
and var2 is the negative var1 it's var1 multiplied by some number divided something like that but again you're just saying that we actually instead of just having our two variables completely random we want them somehow dependent on each other and all that was required was just simply adding in a line in our grammar in order to change the search so the search is going to be a lot more focused on what the human wants to look at so again if within the code there's lots of greater than or equal to something like that the user is able to really have to search kind of find the tests that are more interesting for that type of code so secondly is creating complex objects so here is an example of um, a control flow graph um, and in order to successfully pass whatever um, test, the control flow graph that needed to be created here had to end with two finally blocks. So for your usual test generation tools, it one has to create a, a control flow graph, which isn't an easy test. And then and it also has to create one that has these two finally blocks at the end. So again, a very difficult test for just a, a pure maybe evolutionary um, search-based approach to try find. However, if you specify an example grammar, so an example grammar that maybe just cr could create a generic um, CFG or maybe one that's specific that you want to try find, you can really help the, um, uh, you can really help the tester by generating um, tests that he wants because he's specifying the grammar so he's specifying the structure he wants it to be in so again you can specify try statements try catches try recursions any type of that thing so again all you're doing is you're allowing the tester to specify the structure of the object so therefore the search will have an awful lot easier time creating objects that look like that and then finally domain flexibility so ge is unique amongst um, a lot of evolutionary computation techniques in that its search takes place in a different space to the, the actual executed programs or objects or tests so in ge we have our population of strings or individuals they are passed through to the grammar and then this grammar creates our final tests so these are the tests that are being given to the code, these tests then are getting evaluated and then that's being fed back in. So our search isn't conducted on the tests here on the right, our search is actually performed on the strings here on the left. So that means our search and all of our evolutionary operators are independent of the final objects that we're actually testing and evaluating. So if we want to change anything about our tests we just simply need to do a grammar modification if we want to have tests of variable lengths we don't really mind because our individuals will still be the same just our outputs so if we have strings of different lengths if we want to have tests that are kind of dependent on what was previously picked so depending on what happened in the test previously and um, we want to change our objects we can specify that using an attribute grammar we don't need to go into the weeds of the actual um, search operators itself, the search strategy, the crossovers and mutations. We don't need to worry about that because that's all handled by our grammar. All we're worried about is our um, population of strings. So to sum up, we um, said that grammatical evolution could potentially help search-based test generation overcome some of the deficiencies that we've highlighted. So the first is incorporating domain knowledge in the grammar. So maybe to exploit any dependencies that we know between variables. Um, if there's any, maybe a certain subspace of the entire search space we want to look at that we, will, we can easily allow the user to, by changing the grammar, to focus the search on that area. Second is that the user can easily specify complex objects by just changing the grammar. They can specify the structure of the things they want to look at or want to create. And this can be as general or specific um, as they want. And then finally, we have huge flexibility because our search isn't being done on the actual final tests themselves. It's being done on 
the strings which using the grammar um, creates the tests. And this allows us great domain flexibility so we can create tests of variable lengths easily if we maybe don't know the, the size of the test we want to create. And it also allows us to maybe create um, tests that depend on previous inputs using attribute grammars um, or something like that. So thanks a lot for listening to my talk. Um, and I'll be here if you have any questions.